the three crew members that are getting ready to uh, depart the station and end their six and a half month uh, mission uh, are continuing with their departure preps as we've seen some evidence of this morning. The last American astronaut to leave the station in a Soyuz spacecraft was the commander of the previous expedition, Expedition 42, and that's uh, Barry Wilmore. He returned to Earth in March. Recently, my colleague Brandy Dean talked with Wilmore about the experience of completing a long-duration mission to the station and the ride home on a Soyuz. Thanks so much for joining us, Butch. We really appreciate it. Oh, sure. It's my pleasure. All right. So I guess you've been back for a little while now. Yeah, almost three months. Yes. You feeling back to normal? Oh, yeah. Oh, for many weeks, yeah. Yeah? Oh, feeling great. Did it take long? You know, not for me. Um, I guess you, everybody has a little bit of wobbliness, a little neurovestibular as you adjust to gravity. And for me, that was about three days. So I didn't have any wobbly after that. But certainly the body getting used to gravity. You know, I've got a bum knee, excuse me, that uh, that uh, had to get used to gravity again. That took about a month. But overall, yeah, it came, came back pretty quick. Okay. Well, I guess the lack of gravity was probably nice on your knee for a little while. Oh, it while. was very nice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, I guess Terry um, and Samantha and Anton are all starting to get ready to come home now. What kind of things, what kind of tasks are involved in, in that preparation? Oh, there's, there's quite a bit. I mean, obviously, you've got to clean up your crew quarters. You want to have it nice and clean for the next person that's arriving. So that's a big part. That takes uh, several, several hours. And then you've got a lot of multimedia stuff that you've acquired over the past six months or seven months for them. And they're getting prepped to get all that stuff together. There's certainly some, some personal items that they let you bring back on the Soyuz. There's not a lot of room in the Soyuz, but there's some small things. You've got to get those packed really tightly, really small. And uh, that's the type of things that they're getting and going through right now. Yeah. So I know that y'all train for all sorts of things uh, when you're getting ready for a space flight. Is packing part of it? Do you train uh, for that? <laughs> There's no direct uh, training for that, but I think that's a little bit intuitive. As we go through, you get you get a lot of packing training while you're on uh, on the ISS. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, um, what kind of um, what kind of activities do they have in the in the very last few days as they're as they're getting ready to actually get on board? Yeah, there is some, like you said, there's some there's some a lot of the packing time, and that does take a little, a little bit of time, but just just generally getting everything in order as far as uh, around their crew quarters, like I mentioned. Um, there is some last things that you want to do that you haven't done maybe, or some last things that you want to do again, looking out the window, doing those type of things. Uh, they're still you're still scheduled as well, so it's not like they're completely have free time. There's still items that has to be done on space station. They're they're part of the normal crew, so they're schedule for those two. Any particular uh, special activities that you took part in or memories that you have or things you wish you, you'd had one more chance to do? No, I think I got most of the things accomplished that I wanted to do. Actually, you know, I thought I'd taken all the pictures I wanted to take, but that last week, it was another flurry of a bunch of things that I had that just came to kind of came to mind. Some certain such shots that included the, the entire cupola and those type of things that, uh, you know, to bring those back and have those for the next uh, several decades. So oh, it's yeah. nice to have. So have you, have you had a chance to go through them at all? Or? I've gone through a a large portion of them, not all of it, but certainly some of it. Yeah, and it and it uh, it's 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 a wonderful thing to have those those shots and those uh, those memories. It certainly is. Nice. Well, uh, what about the the actual ride itself back to Earth? I hear it can be a little bit of a oh, wild my, ride. Oh my! Let's see. The, I guess the most uh, descriptive term I've ever heard was like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And <laughs> <laughs> it is that and more. Um, from the time you close the hatch, it's roughly five and a half to six hours until you're on deck. So there's it's a bluster of activity, as you can imagine. Um, closing the hatch, like I said, and then you've got several, uh, an hour and a half, two hours of, of downtime as you get ready for deorbit burn, for, but from deorbit burn all the way down to touchdown. I mean, there's deorbit burn and this, you know, the engine's firing, you can feel the, the G, you can hear things creaking, then you've got separation where the, the bayo, the top portion, the round portion on top that comes apart, and of course sure. the engine compartment separates, and those are dynamic evolutions with jarring, and I actually uh, looked out the window, you can see the bayo kind of glistening red a little bit because we're starting to get into the heating areas. It was kind of floating away in the distance, kind of eerily uh, looking out the window. And then, of course, you get into the entry itself, and uh, oh, my, what, what a ride. I mean, the, it starts off with a little bit of shh. You can hear the wind as you're starting to get in the atmosphere, and then, of course, you start getting into the, the plasma, and you're literally, you know, 17,000 miles an hour in a 3,000-degree fireball. And uh, looking out the window and the plasma going by, and it's, you know, you're shaking, and the G is building up we got 4.4 g's i think was what we peaked out on for you know for uh, not not the g itself but as it g rises and come down it's you know like four four and a half five minutes uh peaked out about a minute at 4.4 like i said so that's dynamic as, as you're shaking and then you get the parachute opening and it's jarring and literally you're flipping and flopping upside down it seems like and just it's just really something else and then of course on down the seats cock up 
little short okay. observers on the back. They cock up about several thousand feet, so the dash is here, and then all of a sudden the dash is here, and it happens pretty <laughs> quick. Uh, and then, of course, touchdown, the soft rocket uh, engines fire, big blast, and I thought we had hit down at that point. Oh, uh, at yeah. the end of that, it felt a little bit firmer, like we'd hit. And then we hit, and oh my! Yeah, literally, I've heard it said, and, and I agree. It's like getting in the back, hit, hit in the back by by a Mack truck. And it's, really? Oh my! It was something else. So March wasn't the first time that you've you've made the trip, but the first time on uh, the first Soyuz. First time on Soyuz. Yeah, yeah. The Soyuz landing is much, much, much harder than a than a shuttle landing. That's yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Were people able to like prepare you for it? Did you did you feel like you knew what to expect? I did, by and large. I mean, the one thing that, you know, and the things that they said, okay, we want to as soon as you hit down, you want to look out the window and see all the people, the helicopter helicopters landing, people scurrying over, and I did that. I looked out the windows right after we hit down, and nothing, because I didn't oh, know it at the time. We'd landed in the ice fog, yeah. so it was nothing, nothing, like for 10 minutes. Finally, we saw a vehicle, one of the all-terrain vehicles drive up, and then a helicopter land in the distance, and then, uh, you know, the games began at that point to get us mm -hmm. out, so. Do you do you get a chance to give the crew on orbit now any any tips or you think they have all the tips? Oh, they've need? got all the tips. They'll be ready. But hey, it's it's a great ride and they're they're going to enjoy all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard somebody say that, that they'd go through the six months on orbit uh, just to get the ride home. <laughs> <laughs> it's that exciting. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, sure. Why yeah. not? All right. It is pretty exciting. Well, what is what is uh, next for you? What else? What else have you uh, got well, coming up? You're still in the debrief process, I mean, even though it's been several months down the road. And you know, you want to share the experience. That's the great thing about this. If you couldn't share it with anyone. It would not be as as meaningful, I guess. So, yeah, I'm in that period where I get to go out and share some of the some of the things that took place and with those that uh, that want to hear it, and uh, uh, and doing that now, and then back into the back in the run of just. Uh, Supporting human spaceflight. Sure. And we'll see what that entails as we go forward. Should be something interesting, right? It'll be interesting, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you uh, talking with us. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs>